DNA molecules are extremely important biological molecules because they store the genetic information that is needed to produce the different types of proteins used by the cell. Now, because of that, any type of damage or any type of mutation to the DNA molecule will lead to disastrous consequences. And to prevent this from happening, we don't actually want to use the DNA directly to synthesize the proteins every single time we need to produce some type of protein. So instead of continually using the DNA molecules over and over to produce the proteins, we use these intermediate nucleic acids known as RNA molecules. So an RNA molecule is essentially a copy of the segment of the DNA that we essentially want to use to carry out some type of function, for example, produce some given protein. And by using these intermediate RNA molecules, our cells eventually prevent damage to the DNA molecules. So what types of RNA molecules are found in our cells? Well, the three major components of the RNA molecules of our cells are the messenger RNA, mRNA, transfer RNA, tRNA, and ribosomal RNA or RNA. And we also have trace amounts of other types of RNA molecules as we'll see in just a moment. So let's begin by focusing on these three RNA molecules. And let's begin with messenger RNA. Now, the messenger RNA molecule is basically the molecule that is eventually used by the ribosomes of our cells to synthesize the proteins in a process known as translation. So in prokaryotic cells, what happens is we take the DNA of that prokaryotic cell and then we transcribe the mRNA molecule and then that mRNA molecule can be used directly to synthesize the protein or proteins. So the mRNA molecule in prokaryotic cells can sometimes code for more than one protein, but in eukaryotic cells, it's slightly different. In eukaryotic cells, we take the DNA and then we produce a precursor mRNA, a pre-mRNA molecule. And before we can actually synthesize the proteins from that pre-mRNA molecule, we have to modify that pre-mRNA molecule to produce the fully mature and functional mRNA molecule. And only then can we actually synthesize the proteins and unlike in prokaryotic cells, in eukaryotic cells, a distinct mRNA molecule is produced for every one of the genes that is found on the DNA molecule. And the messenger RNA molecule makes up about 5% of the total RNA composition found in our cell. Now let's move on to transfer RNA or tRNA. So transfer RNA makes up about 15% of the total cellular RNA found inside our cells. And tRNA has this distinct stem loop shape that we spoke about previously. And what the function of tRNA molecule is, is to basically take an activated amino acid found in the cytoplasm and bring it to the ribosome to help synthesize that polypeptide chain. And each amino amino acid has at least one tRNA molecule made specifically to carry and bring that amino acid to that ribosome to synthesize the protein. Now, ribosomal RNA or rRNA is the major component. It makes up about 80% of the total composition of RNA found in our cells. Now, rRNA is a major constituent in the ribosomes found inside our cells, and the ribosomes are the cell machinery responsible for synthesizing the polypeptide chains, the proteins. Now, rRNA gives the ribosome not only its three-dimensional structure, but the rRNA also acts as a catalyst and it catalyzes the formation of the peptide bonds in that polypeptide chain. And we'll discuss how that actually takes place in a future lecture. Now, in prokaryotic cells, there are three types of rRNA molecule found in the ribosome. We have the 23S, we have the 16S, and we have the 5S. 
Now, in addition to these three major components of the RNA molecules found inside our body, we have these additional RNA molecules that also serve their own unique function and purpose. So let's discuss what some of these RNA molecules are. And let's begin with small nuclear RNA or SN RNA. Now, earlier, when I discussed the messenger RNA molecule, I said that in eukaryotic cells, we actually have to first modify the pre-mRNA molecule before it becomes a fully mature and fully functional mRNA molecule. And one way by which we modify it is by removing the introns and splicing together, gluing together the axons. Now, what the function of small nuclear RNA is, is to basically splice splice together the exons to form that fully mature mRNA that can then be used by the ribosomes to basically synthesize that given polypeptide chain. Now let's move on to microRNA or miRNA. Now the reason we call this microRNA is because it's actually a very, very tiny RNA molecule. It only consists of about 20 nucleotides. And what it does is essentially binds onto the complementary mRNA molecule and it prevents, it inhibits the process of translation, so the synthesis of the polypeptide chain. Now, what about small RNA? Well, small RNA is basically a constituent of this biological molecule found in a cytoplasm of our cells known as the signal recognition particle. Now, remember from biology, the signal recognition particle is this complex that binds onto the protein that synthesized polypeptide chain and then brings it to its final destination, be it in the cell or outside the cell. So, the small RNA molecule helps form the signal recognition particle that directs the synthesized protein to their intracellular or extracellular final destination. Let's move on to small interfering RNA molecules or siRNA molecules. And what these molecules do is they essentially bind onto the mRNA molecule and they stimulate the breakdown, the, the degradation of the messenger RNA molecule. So remember, we don't always want to synthesize a given protein inside our cells because first of all, protein synthesis uh, uses up a lot of ATP molecules. And so if we have plenty of a given polypeptide in our cell, we don't actually want to synthesize anymore. So at times we want to break down our messenger RNA molecule. And it's the small interfering RNA that helps break down and stimulate the breakdown of the messenger RNA molecule. And finally, we also have something called telomerase RNA component. Now, remember, inside eukaryotic cells, we have these enzymes known as telomerase enzymes. And what telomerase basically does is it is it uh, regulates the ends of our DNA molecule. So inside our cells, unlike in bacterial cells, inside our cells, we have a linear DNA molecule, and that means we have a beginning and we have an end. And the two ends, the sequences of nucleotides on the two ends of the DNA molecule are known as telomeres. And every time we replicate our DNA molecule, those telomeres have to be regulated and controlled. And it's the telomerase enzyme that regulates and modifies these telomere ends. And so the telomerase RNA molecule is a component of this telomerase. And we'll, sp and we'll discuss this in much more detail when we'll focus on the process of DNA replication. So these are the different types of RNA molecules that exist inside our cells. I'm sorry, RNA molecules that exist inside our cells.